Hello, everyone, and welcome to RHAP. I'm your host, Tarn Armstrong, and we are here today to talk about episode five of Jet Lag the Game. With me, to talk through the duning that we saw. <laughs> <laughs> Sasha, I feel Sasha. You know, sorry about messing with my hair. It's just so many flies oh, everywhere. <laughs> That's all I can take away from this episode is f a fly here, a fly there, a fly up Ben's nose, a fly in his hat, like a bee in his bonnet. Like, I don't know <laughs> what's happening. That looked like a nightmare. <laughs> like, uh, I'll walk however long you need me to walk in whatever degree temperature yes. you need. Uh, but if I also have to deal with a bunch of flies circling around my head, uh, we're done. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't. Know. I can't. I'm a princess. I, the thing is, I have to win. So we just get the, you know, the beekeeper's hat. The, hat that the, my kayaking hat. That's yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, my God. You must travel with it. No, I can't. I can't. I I am such a baby when it comes to like animal things, especially like annoying flies and mosquitoes. I just, I feel like they're specifically attracted to me because they can sense my anger with them. Mm -hmm. So they're just like, yes, this is the one we have to really piss off. <laughs> Those flies, they just really want to piss us off, I guess. They, what, what else? Get a job, flies. Get a job. Uh, so I, again, I thought this was a great episode. I think that like, um, it definitely felt like sort of a setup episode yes. for, uh, what is coming the finale. Um, but, uh, but very fun along the way, uh, Sam and Toby didn't have a ton to do because they were mostly just on flights. Uh, and then they attempted one challenge. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, Ben and Adam were just, were duning it up. They were, they, they did Dune and they did it well. Oh my God. When I tell you this, which usually, listen, a lot of these um, shows, right? Not just jet lag, but I think the amazing race as well. The penultimate episode is so much just like, what is the setup, right? Where are we going next? And that's almost what was on both teams minds where they're like, no, this literally this day does not matter. We just need to know what the other team is doing. But if both teams are playing chicken, how does that work? You know, well, what I, I feel mean? like I feel like that's why, like, because Ben and Adam were behind and they yeah. had the setback, they knew they just had to push mm -hmm. forward on this day. Yeah. Um, whereas uh, uh, Sam and Toby um, were kind of like, well, we we're, we were kind of in the lead. So we just want to make sure that they don't uh, pass us. Yeah. Um, and they were trying to be a little more. They seem to be trying to be a little more reactive. Mm -hmm. Um which uh, is is definitely tricky. I think that like you certainly don't want to get caught uh, like unaware of what the other yeah. team is doing. But I do think that if you try to be reactive too much, um, it, it, you could get in the because because again, as we've talked about all season, the last thing you want to do is be too reactive and too following. Uh, it's too much of a follower in terms of uh, where the other team is going. Um, because the people that go like do their own thing and sort of lead the path will probably take the lead. Especially with timing and the way these airplanes and airports and airlines are set up. I just feel it's such a big gamble because it's almost like you have to be flushed with cash. Neither teams are to where I think you can fully just be the chaser, you know, where you're like, great, you're going here. I can quickly let go of, you know, this crazy ticket I just bought and go to the next, you know, buy the next ticket and pivot. I just don't think Australian airlines allow for that. But the game may account for it. And this mm -hmm. is where I like the strategy might work um, is that like they do still have, theoretically, I assume, some steals. Oh, um, and so... I assume that that's like for Sam and Toby, the plan should be, I assume, check the board yes. in the morning. Um, ben and Adam are stuck uh, in the outback. They can't leave until 10 a.m. Mm. Uh, they won't arrive uh, to the next place until I think like one ish, something like that, um, which means they have like a ton of time where Ben and Adam are just stuck holding all this money. Um, and if they can find a steal there, or if there's no steal there, quickly go to a new place and find a steal somewhere else. That could be huge, big, uh, big game changer. And part of why I think they are trying to be 
reactive here, but um, you know, it's definitely, I, I, I think that, you know, again, you can always sort of tell that they've designed the game well when here we are in the end game and it's, it really is seemingly up for grabs. Yeah. And I think I appreciate about this season specifically, it feels like very back and forth, right? Every episode, it seems like, oh, this team got it. They're good. There's no way, you know, to get caught up, blah, blah, blah. And then they go to the library <laughs> and have a setback or they can't flip a, you know, a bottle or we're, we can't, don't know where the doors for a train are. So it's just, it's so fun. And I'm still guessing. I can't believe it because technically Sam and Toby were like after the flags, it's never been this high. This is the highest total. Oh my God. Da 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 da. And then e almost immediately, uh, you know, Sam, uh, sorry, <laughs> Adam and Ben get a great game board and they're in it because. I, I appreciated the challenges, I feel, this episode where I was like, they felt hard enough, Taryn, where I was like, oh, it's exciting, but still doable, where people are getting money. Yes. Um, the, uh, like, the Telegram Morse code one was, um, was probably, like, in terms of the challenge itself, the least interesting, but, like, the interesting part of it was the location of them yeah. having to, like, hike a mile in 100 degree weather. Uh, with flies all around them, which I probably they probably didn't anticipate um, in order to get there. And uh, the pool and was so funny. <laughs> Adam was in was appalled at the suggestion <laughs> of using a pool noodle. He was, no, it will not nope. work. That is absolutely no. not how it, he. <laughs> it's like you insulted his family. <laughs> <laughs> Don't insult. Adam's uh, dad all skills. <laughs> yeah, he knows what yeah. he's doing. No, he was in Dune needs to sponsor Adam. Okay, because <laughs> I don't know what you know he he just became. And can, he said, can we get him to do some uh, Timothy Chalamet cosplay? Uh, uh, uh don't, don't let Club Chalamet <laughs> get to Adam. Wear the cape, stand on a on a, a sand dune at some point. Uh, we can make this work, I think. I, I just think that he prayed to the right dune gods because <laughs> he was 10 on 10 with every challenge. And I, I couldn't believe it. Just at least try to make it hard. Damn. Mm, he was in he was in the flow state. Uh, mm. They they nail the uh, the Morse code challenge and then they go for golf um they knew they could do morse code but the golf is a little riskier um and theoretically you have two people two chances to make a bogey in one of 18 holes and i i agree with adam's logic here i felt like this was this is very doable like you get some practice time uh you have 18 holes to accomplish this like i'm not like a golf player um i yeah, probably couldn't do this uh having like never played like full golf a uh, full game of golf um but i still feel like give me a day to practice maybe and they learn to have good amount of time right because there was a again right. luck 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 because they had a lot of time to practice and it's and it did seem like adam grew up because uh, he does channel right. his dad he said so he's, like, he's not good, but he's done it before. Because I don't know what the hell kind of, you know, golf putters and whatever you're supposed to use. I don't know. Yeah. Golf I, I don't think that, like, I could do it in the time frame that they did. Uh, like, it probably would have taken all day and, like, hired somebody to teach me, basically. <laughs> um, money is no problem. Sam, because, pay be, for it. <laughs> right. Like, and, and that was, that's actually kind of like, could you hire somebody to, to tutor you uh, a little bit? Like, would that come out of your budget? Uh, like, that'd be interesting. Um, but, uh, but especially for somebody who he, he did, he know, even though he's a, a self-proclaimed bad golfer, um, he at least knows like the basics. And I think if you know the basics, there's a good chance you'll be able to do it over 18 holes. He nails it on the first one, um, despite the fact that uh, Ben was unable to uh, learn how to to, think, to, to, to control <laughs> whatever oh the God. club. 
It was so funny. I don't think like I've gone to Top Golf and you know trying to hit some balls, mm -hmm. and it is not easy. I I could do it, but it took me seven years. It felt like. <laughs> yeah, I uh, this was exciting though. Like this was like it. The build up was interesting. I loved Ben uh, being like I'm creeped out <laughs> right now by how calm he is. No, why yeah. was he in the golf cart being like, guys, he's been possessed. What is, is it the sandworm in Dune, whatever that big thing is? Yeah. He, I probably been as like, he got my guy. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Revenge of the body snatchers has happened. He's talking about visions is weird. I don't know understand what's happening here. Fun stuff, though. Uh, very fun to I, like. I assume they would have like montaged through a bunch of holes if yeah. he had gotten it on his first one. Um, but uh, but it was very fun to watch. Uh, and then uh, they they mentioned this on the the layover podcast, but like I love the idea of these two showing up, being like, "We need to play a round of golf," and then being like, "Sorry, we've got a competition going on. You have to wait a few hours." Though I like, don't worry, we can wait. It's fine. Um, so they wait hours. They finally get on the course. One of them plays one hole, gets a bogey, and they go, <laughs> and then they run off into the sunset <laughs> and leave the course. Just like I said, I just don't understand how there isn't some warning out for these two. <laughs> In Australia, because <laughs> they are vibing. Okay, it is wild, wild west with them. They're just doing to normal people that don't know jet lag are just doing such sussy things. I find it to be very funny <laughs> at this mm -hmm. point. Okay, so then then they're walking, and Adam has an idea for one of the challenges, a three X challenge. It's that you have to with no clock or any kind of regularly scheduled reference, um, basically, you know, count 30 minutes in your head within a margin of three minutes on either side. So you can be from 27 to 33, uh, and you have to nail it. And so this is actually, this is a competition that we've seen on Big Brother. Mm -hmm. um, and we have seen some people get very close. There are various strategies that people have used. Um, and, but then you you also see people wildly off base. <laughs> it me the wildly off base person. Um, now on Big Brother, they are not allowed to usually move. <laughs> They're yes. usually like in a coffin or standing still or something. Uh, so they have to get a little more uh, sort of mental with it. Um, but uh, but when I saw this, I was like, okay, this is doable. But definitely difficult um, unless you have like a good strategy for it. So Adam has this idea. He's like, hold on, listen. Listen. And of course, it's like footsteps because they're doing Dune. <laughs> um, but instead of doing like the sand walk, oh it's. My God. What's the walk a certain a way in walk. Dune, right? Yeah. Oh, look at you me. Have to, you have to walk you know very me. irregularly. Okay, yes. Make it seem like it's <laughs> That's natural. That's what I thought. Okay, yeah. Because <laughs> when he's like, listen, I say, oh, there's an animal. Something has come up and is about to get them. So I, I, this is a great idea. However, I had concerns because, I, because in my mind, and this was like there were there were not great concerns because I was just mm -hmm. like misinterpreting things. But in my mind, they had just done this mile walk in 100 degree weather. Um, and so like because I had forgotten how long they spent at the golf course. Yeah, exactly. Chilling, resting, whatever. Uh, so in my mind, it's like you just walked like it's so long. It's so hot. Like, I think this is a good plan. But what happens if you get tired? <laughs> You're walking for a half hour after all the walking you've already done in this hot weather. What happens if you slow down uh, because you're getting a little tired? Mm -hmm. um, again, th this it was a it was the, the concern was unwarranted because I think there was plenty of time between when they had walked before and now. Um, but uh, but I, I was I, I once again, I doubted. I, you, I doubted him. Wrong. 
take your strategy, take your logic, and get the heck out of the Northern Territory. I was not a believer. Right? That's the problem. That it's it's a Terran problem. No, because. <laughs> When I say the ancestors were with Adam, what did Michelle Carey say? Is it Scorpio energy? Scorpio. Yeah, I think he's a Scorpio, energy. right? But whatever that may be, all, all them planets, one thing about them, they were aligned for Adam. Because I don't know whose hand. He saw the Matrix. Yeah, I'm telling you. What type of blue pill, red pill <laughs> bullshit is this? I don't know. Because then he's, because Taryn, he goes, I walk 1.84 steps a second. Sorry, who is measuring the 8.4 part of the step? So, I think what he did was he walked for uh, like a certain amount of steps or a certain amount of minutes and then and then calculated how many steps he took in the five minutes or how, how long it took him to get to five minutes or how many steps it took him. To yeah, get. and then he did the math. And then from there you calculate, okay, expand that to 30 minutes. And then as long as I walk regularly, and this is another part of it, you know, like it's one thing to walk straight in a line mm -hmm. regularly. It's another to turn, um, which was another potential complication. And yet, he nails it to you know, the it's second. It's like embarrassing how good it was. You know what I mean? Embarrassing for the doubters, I mean, <laughs> because he's only off, and you can't tell me this isn't for the meme, off by only 69 seconds. 69 tenths of a second. Yeah, so, sorry. Or, or hundreds or whatever. Yeah, not uh, it's, milliseconds, it's, milliseconds. Yes, sorry, it's not 30 seconds. minutes, zero seconds. Yes. Point six nine. Yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and I saw that and they said, that's an editing trick. You just, what do you mean? This is I mean, so good. <laughs> I feel like there needs to be a bonus clause. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, okay. You know what? You're welcome, jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> like, if if you nail a challenge this hard, <laughs> like, no pun intended. You get a you yes. get a you get a little bonus. You know what I mean? You should get like a little tip. <laughs> this sounds so wrong, but anyway, we obviously mean money. <laughs> mm. But you, I think you should get something. Yeah. It may be a tip. Maybe it could be uh, w because one thing I do miss compared to I think other things is sabotages. Mm. So you maybe uh, you get only two and two minutes, 30 seconds because it was a time challenge. So you affect, you know, the opposition's time. So it's only two minutes, 30 seconds to find that book instead. You know, whatever. <laughs> I just miss sabotages, traps, whatever. Mm. I think. That would be nice. Why not? Let's. I do think. I, I do think that. Um. I don't know if it's just luck of the draw, but like there have been so few steel options. Uh. I. I definitely think I miss some of that like interaction throughout. Yeah. Um. That said, I think we're about to like head into like the 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 finale should be them like basically directly competing with one mm -hmm. another. Um. So like I think the way this game has been structured. It's more of because like they have different kinds of games. Some of them yes. like tag or hide and seek. It's like there's a there's a new thing. There's new rounds essentially every couple of episodes. Um, whereas this is more of like a little bit of a slow burn toward a climax. Um, and uh, and I think that there's room for that too. I think that 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 mm -hmm. can be very satisfying as well. Um, this would be fun on a binge. Oh, for sure. I think it really works well on a binge because I think you're so in it. You know exactly, you know, where everything is. Oh, so good. Mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, um, Sam and Toby, they did do their drawing thing. Um, so <laughs> first of all, uh, we did get comments on the last uh, uh, podcast about the dude. <laughs> Ned, Kelly, Ned Kelly. Ned Kelly. Yes. Uh, and that and is they were like, me. guys, I guys, you so you don't understand, you idiots. It <laughs> wouldn't have it. been a drawing of him. It would have been a drawing of his famous armor. To which I feel like I, I would respond, care. I don't know that either. Like what you're saying makes no difference to me. It's, I, it's 
It's words. I can read them, but I don't comprehend them. What the problem is, if you're doing Tin Man or a man in a tin body armor, how am I not guessing Tin Man? <laughs> what do I put in the back? No Wizard of Oz? Yeah. <laughs> What? Get out of here. I think that Sam and Toby picked the best person because at least it is Googleable and you can find the answer. It's just, like, it's just like you, you fools. You you're talking about Tom when you should really be talking about Bob. Uh, and it's like, I don't know either one. Neither of those two people mean anything to me. And I love that the comments are like, I'm Australian. And we said, yes, that is a point. <laughs> Sam's followers are they Australian only question mark because these followers are writing Joe Biden and Usain Bolt <laughs> okay okay Sasha though uh I I was not sure if I should admit this but on the layover podcast they all admitted that none of them knew who this person was except for Toby Oh yeah, I, I had no idea who either. Person. And I'm a track and feel girly. And even then, unfortunately, I don't know Australian people. Right. Like so there's I only think, so many countries I can ride for, you know. I think the strategy of the timing of when they released all kind of worked for this in the same way that it could have worked for Armor Guy. Mm -hmm. Um so <laughs> Tin Man. People are gonna sorry, Australia. <laughs> They're gonna be so mad at us. <laughs> But Listen, we didn't come for Tim Tams like they did on the layover podcast. All right. Listen, all we're saying is we American. We no understand. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I would have no idea. I was like, uh, yeah, this if if I saw this, I mean, I wouldn't guess you saying Bolts. But no, like, the meme answers were killing me. This this is why I said you can't put Tin Man. People are going to say even crazier stuff, I feel. Yeah. Unserious. Well, they nailed it. They succeeded the challenge. They hop on the plane. And by the time they get to their destination, they don't have a lot of time. Um, I think Toby heard this challenge. She was like, master the Dewey Decimal System. It's in a library. Like, this is our jam. Um, but this was more of a, a luck based challenge i think than a mental challenge even though it felt like it should be mental library master Correct. whatever um it is very hard i don't know if you've tried this taryn for my 30th birthday my husband actually did the amazing race in my area and what because i love going to the library one mm -hmm. of the tasks was find a book with the name sasha in it oh. and it is even when I could go to Google, not Google, but, you know, go to the library catalog and look it up, it was still really hard. And I think I understand the Dewey Decimal System. But even then, I was in shambles. My thing is, anytime I'm at a library or a bookstore, I, like, actively, on purpose, sabotage myself because I don't want to find it right away. Oh, you know that's what I mean? terrible for you. What? What? Because I want to browse a little bit. You know, like I want to look oh. around and enjoy the atmosphere. Yes, yes. If I, find, yes. if I find my find what I'm looking for right away, then I'll feel like, OK, well, what am I doing here now? You know what I the mean? The problem with being a, a bookworm <laughs> is that you want to be a bookworm and then you end up being like, oh, well, this is a cool book. What's this about? No, three minutes. Come on, move. <laughs> and then Sam just following Toby instead of maybe splitting up. I know. I was Sam. like, guys, split up. Sam, be serious for one minute. They did eventually. They did eventually. Because Toby yelled. Did you see Toby? Toby was like, go over there and look. <laughs> Poor Toby. <laughs> was... Mine just have these huge backpacks on while they're doing this. In the library, just mad dash. It, it's just something mind. so sad about somebody like who who like can't find what they're looking for in a library. Oh, it's the worst thing. It's yeah. the worst thing that could happen to me. A book I want to read or I want to find and I can't hang it up. Cancel yeah. the library. I don't want it. They only bet like two fifty though. Like it wasn't a huge that, deal. Good job to Sam. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it were up to Toby, it's thousand. <laughs> Oh my god! I just don't know why he was behind her like a toddler, <laughs> trying to get help their mom with a book. Like what? 
I think <laughs> listen, I don't think Sam had a lot of faith in the whole thing. No, the th- exactly. <laughs> it, it's giving self sabotage. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they, they so the, what they said Ooh. in the layover podcast was that uh, they weren't able because I I was like, guy, I want to see where it was. Yeah, I would be like, there's I'm not leaving until but the I library find was the closing. So they couldn't actually find where it was. Um, the the only thing they can think of, because they've since like looked to see where it should be and it should have been where they looked uh, oh. is that basically either the, it was checked out at that time or somebody was like physically reading it in the library or something at that time. It was just somewhere else for some reason. Um, but and they yeah. only have one copy of famous book. What are you doing? Like? I think, oh, well, I think they're supposed to have three. Yeah. Um, but maybe all of them were checked out. I don't know. Oh no. See, that's crazy. Wh- where's a clause? You got to have <laughs> something. I think you can try it again. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like if you find out that, you know, you look it up in the catalog and it's nowhere to be found. I think Is that just luck of the draw? Oh, hell no. <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> Oh um all right well that, so that was those were the challenges and and so again how this is shaping up is that um sam and toby are currently in the lead four to three mm-hmm. uh, however um ben and adam are, are going to be able to drop one dollar uh on in in the in the outback and then head over to the series of three territories that sam and toby uh collected originally um, and so, uh, Sam and Toby will have to combat that. They will either go to, um, and I don't have the territories pulled up in front of me, but like the Southern territory that, uh, I think Ben and Adam put like a thousand or two on, uh, to maybe steal that one from them or just go and defend their three. I think they're the plan right now for them is to just wait and see what the, uh, what Sam and, uh, what Ben and Adam do. Um, and then, I mean, for Ben and Adam, it really is just like, I think the main thing is they have to just hope that they don't get stolen from because that could just kill their run. Um, they could show up in the, in, in the first territory that they're trying to recapture and find that like 30 to 50% of their money is gone and now in the hands of Sam and Toby. And that would be pretty devastating because then they'd have to do a challenge to try to build it up. But now it's already like afternoon on the day that the game ends. So uh, I think that's going to be the main thing. If they are if they are able to go unopposed without mm-hmm. having any of their money stolen, I, I think it might be hard for Sam and Toby to uh, to win unless they just get really unlucky with their like travel, their plane gets delayed or something screws them up. Uh, ben and Adam. Um, so that means that Sam and Toby, I think, will be looking for like a good challenge to either bet really big on or like steal a good amount from. Yeah, I just we need money (laughs) and there is no money because I don't know. The boys are killing it. Okay, Dune, sponsor them because I don't know. Some ancestor has shown up here and Sam and Toby vibes only because it's it's not happening. I don't see it. And I don't know that jet lag does such a blind side, right? Like you sometimes know, hey, X, Y and Z things need to happen for this team that's behind, you know, that needs to win. So let's see. Mm-hmm. I, I hope at least one steal happens so so there's some fun here. All right. What what's the prediction? Who's winning? I think that it might end up being close because uh, I think challenges reset, right? For Sam and Toby in South Australia. So if challenges reset the next day, I think they might be able to get a little bit of money. But I just feel that they need way more than they have. Um, and if there's a steal, they have a chance. If there's no steal, I do think the boys are on the up and up. And I think they just keep making that sh money. And they're just out. They're just going to be dropping and moving. What about you? I, I think, listen, if Adam continues to just like uh yeah. be like doctor strange and just see every scenario literally uh i think they're unbeatable um even if they get stolen from he's just going to just going to nail another challenge um and and they they won't be stopped um but if he only has his powers in the outback while they're doing dune then i think sam and toby might have a chance here yeah like i just think it i just feel that you know 
the boys really have to make some mistakes and they usually don't, right? Like that's just not their MO. The MO is that something else catches them and they get screwed. Then Sam and his partner usually have a chance. Mm-hmm. So I-, I beg there's a steal. I'll just say that. Because mm-hmm. I... Yeah, but, you know, either way, I think watching them just kill these challenges is so funny. I like, couldn't, I couldn't believe serious. it was to the second. That was unreal. Like, I, I, I how? I, I really try, right? Because we, like I said, we, we watch Big Brother and these, you know, these, um, these org games that we play, these online reality games. I played a few of those and... I won one and there was certain challenge like that. And I tried it and I, I, I did not. I was not even close. <laughs> and I thought one Mississippi to Mississippi works. It, I don't know. Maybe my accent, the way I say Mississippi is wrong. <laughs> but <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm close. I must be off by like a few seconds. Maybe I was off by minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I, I think that we're like really actually very bad at it. Uh, yeah. Like trying to do it mentally. It's it's very, a very difficult thing yeah. to do. Yeah. Maybe so like, the, you're right. Yeah. Sorry. Having some kind of physical counter is, I think, a huge, huge uh, advantage. Um, and uh, and then, you know, just to, <laughs> just to nail it exactly. <laughs> yeah. I can do 7.5 claps a minute. So if I did blank amount of claps, that's how many. <laughs> <laughs> only seven in a minute. <laughs> I'm like one, two. You have to do like a little dance so you can oh, keep boy. the rhythm, you know. Yeah. Otherwise, I think if you do it really fast, you you're done. You get tired, yeah. like you said. All right. Anything else from this episode? No, I'm just I'm excited for the finale. Yes. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us here today. Uh, excited for for what's to come for the finale of Jetlag, the game. I hope you've jo- enjoyed uh, the podcast and the journey so far. Um, you can, of course, find me over on Twitch. Sasha's podcasting as well. Yes, um, you can find me over on Twitter to know all the podcasting I'm doing. Uh, the biggest thing is, listen, if you want to know about pop culture and get educated, follow Mess Magnet. So Rob has a website slash mess feed. I'm covering Below Deck. <laughs> so check that out on Rob has a podcast YouTube channel or the Below Deck uh, wrap up. And um, Taryn, we have new things coming in scripted TV. So for everything Taryn is doing with Grace and I'm doing with Mike Bloom, just check out We Know Scripted TV. Lots of fun stuff coming there. So yes. with that, yeah, I think that's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, if, if you uh, if you like TV that uh, is actually <laughs> produced by, with a script <laughs> and acted, uh, with that, whatever that weird stuff is, um, we are talking all about that uh, and helping you figure out what you should be watching and uh, all kinds of fun stuff over there. So check it out. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see all of you next time. <laughs>